just made it through a crossing. I almost got bogged. No cars have come through here. It's not all that easy to find gold. Hands up, who thinks it's gold? Oh, I'm so glad. I've been looking long and hard for this. I'm currently caretaking a mining camp in a remote area in Western Australia. A lot of gold has been picked up in this part of the country and there are more nuggets waiting to be found by my metal detector. Since I live out here on my own, I have to be careful with everything I do and look after myself. Loving the challenge and the adventure, this is another day in my life as a full-time gold prospector. I think we're good to go. Oh, I don't have a nugget container yet. <laughs> I'll get the nugget container and then we'll head off. It is so humid today after the rain. I've been detecting for about an hour and finally have my first target. So I thought we'll dig that together. Yeah, the quad is parked way back over there and I've been following different flats and creek systems. And now I walked up this gully here and ended up at the foot of another range. Let's see what this target is. There's a lot of quartz here. The signal is everywhere. Now that I disturbed the ground and spread it out a bit, the signal is coming from different spots, which makes me think it's noisy ground. That's what it does. And particularly after the rain, the ground is very saturated. But since it's so humid, I don't even know how many hours I can do today. It's not particularly hot, but just the humidity. I mean, look at my shirt. This is only after an hour detecting. It's gonna be an interesting day, I think. Yeah, two very unlucky things in this situation. First of all, what's gonna be a bit of an issue is the ants around here. And second of all, the target is right near the water edge. I don't know who's tried that before, but retrieving a target in water, once you stir it up, it's all going to be murky and a bit of a tricky situation to get the target out. I'll have to hurry up. These ants are stirred up already. That's going to be very difficult. <coughs> Yeah, unfortunately the target is still in the hole, but I can't even see what the ground looks like there. I'll try and get underneath it. Ah, a loose rock. I don't know if this is going to work. Yeah, it's very difficult when you can't see. Oh, it's still in there. I regretted the moment that I heard the target and I saw it was water in here. I usually don't even swing my coil over spots where I don't want to dig a hole, so didn't obey my own rule. Let's just hope it's not a piece of rubbish I'm wasting my time on here. Oh, we 
we finally got it. Yes. Oh. It's a shotgun pellet. Oh, all this effort for a tiny piece of lead. But yeah, that shows me nobody has detected this gully properly yet. And it looks quite exciting to head further up. And the overgrowth in here is not too bad. It's just super humid. So I'm going to work my way further up. Definitely. It looks very exciting and adventurous. I can see quartz popping all of the schist on the sides here. Let's keep going. I double checked the hole and I'm pretty sure there's another target in there. I ended up playing in the water here for a little while, but I, c I just can't locate the target. I don't think that my pinpointer is waterproof. So if you've got a recommendation for me for a, a good waterproof pinpointer, please leave a comment below so I can chase it up. All I can do now is wait until it dries out. So I'm going to take a GPS location from the spot here. That's the first bottle of water gone thanks to the long dig in the water. But I'll try and continue further up. I wouldn't mind to climb up onto these hills here, because you never know, the gold could be sitting right on top. And if nobody has climbed up there before, or not many people, or not many people with the GPX 6000, my chances could be all right. The water looks so clear. I'd probably even drink that if I had to. Ah, much light. Oh. What a... Oh, that is probably just a hot rock. Yeah, look at the black particles in there. There will be a hot rock. That's where I came up from. And I'm still not quite at the top yet. I just needed a short breather. Almost at the top. Oh, I'm glad to see a bit of quartz here. Oh, and that's what it looks like on the other side. What a view. Gold country as far as the eye can see. I've been out here for exactly four weeks. Tomorrow I'm finally going to town to get some shopping done, to get a few essentials. Tomorrow is my only chance to go in before more rain is coming. That's why I'm saying I don't think anybody else is stupid enough to spend uh, summer out here. The conditions are probably going to be wet and slippery because we've had a lot of rain out here but I can't wait much longer to go in because otherwise I'll be cut off again. There's so much country out here and no people, nobody. I haven't heard any cars, I haven't seen anybody. There were no tracks on the road whatsoever. No traffic, no noise, no neighbors. By the way, my quad bike is parked next to that hill back there. Yeah, nice! Somebody's been out here chaining, dragging it behind to leave a mark in the ground so they know where they detect it. Yeah, I'll take that with me. Nice find! I just found something which I've never found in the bush before. 
I know what it is and I've seen it before but I've never actually found one of these it's a core sample what would a drill sample do out here and why would somebody leave it here there's another piece what's that even doing out here why would somebody go through the effort of drilling something like this and then they just leave it behind? This sample here went straight through the quartz as well. Yeah, it could definitely carry gold, who knows? Since nobody has tested this. The question is, what is it doing out here? Why? Did you just see that? I cannot believe that this just happened. I'm just editing this video and I can't believe that I didn't see the mouse when I opened up the bonnet. I've had mice under the bonnet before and trust me, it is not pleasant when they rip the interior apart to build a nest under the bonnet. They also chew through wires. So apparently there is a mouse living under the bonnet. So what I'm doing here is basically just having a quick look over the car after I drove almost a thousand kilometers. I'm just checking all the fluids, the oil, the brake fluid, the power steering and of course the water. The car is good to go. I just gotta load it up now. Here they are, all ready to go. That's 165 liters of drinking water plus I've got another 20 in the back there. That's still full. I keep it full just in case something goes wrong with the radiator. Pretty easy to carry them in there when they're empty. It'll be a bit different on the way back. And now I'll just put the rest of the inleted into the generator, which runs the washing machine. Very important device out here. By the way, the generator also runs the aircon in one of the donger rooms there, which I could use and I think I will once it gets super hot but for now I'll just try to endure it and not spoil myself too much because the day will come and I'll have to leave and I'll have to camp outside again and I won't be very comfortable if I spoil myself in the aircon. Oh, let's just ignore this okay? Yeah not much I can do about that. It's flat. Come on, chuk chuk. Come on, chuk chuk. I got up the next morning to the same scenario as usual. Flying termites everywhere. Hello, you two. The termites are a good source of protein for the chooks. But when Kentucky tried to scratch the paint on my car, I decided it was time to drive into town. I'm expecting boggy roads. We're about to find out. Let's go. The car's still looking nice and clean now. I don't think it'll be the case on the way back. Yeah, here you can see the force of the water and the damage it's done on the roads here. Oh, I just made it through a crossing. I almost got bogged and that's the last thing I need out here. 
it was about momentum so I couldn't get the camera out but like you can see it was a close call and this is only the beginning of the track so it's gonna be interesting but definitely I shouldn't be taking any risks because I really don't want to lose the car here somewhere and be stuck out here. I really can't risk getting bogged out here. No cars have come through here. It's been four weeks since I've come through here. So I'm just going to walk these puddles to see how boggy they are. I don't think they are very deep. It's just about how boggy they are. I've been thinking about the situation for a minute and I've decided to turn around. I think it's the most sensible thing to do because I am out here on my own and if I get stuck, not even don't I have phone service here, I'll turn around. It's not worth it. I'll be all right without my luxuries, coffee and chocolates. Of course we had more rain last night and it's overcast and there's more rain coming. It looks like a low coming down the coast and it's bringing plenty of moisture with it and there is a flood warning for nearby it looks like i'm gonna be stuck here for a while it's just lucky that i have enough food i'm running low on quite a few things because i haven't been in the shop for over four weeks at least i still have enough food here to survive that's all good and i suppose i'll just have to live without my luxury items because it's so overcast today i'm thinking we are better off trying a spot nearby instead of driving off too far. At least if it starts raining, I'd be able to get back to the camp quickly. Yeah, it looks like this slow leak. I should have tested it this morning, but yeah, that tire is fairly flat. A little compressor like that is just a very handy device to carry around on the bike with me and it got me out of tricky situations several times. I also carry some plugs on the bike so if I have a flat tire then I can fix it while I'm out there and pump it back up. But I have checked this one here several times. I cannot find the leak. It's a very slow leak. I even had it parked in the river, splashed water all over it just to see where the bubbles come up but no bubbles. Yeah, I just pulled up at the random spot close to the track, close to the camp. So we'll just give it a go here. And I'm trying something different today. <laughs> I'm taking the GPZ 7000 today. I've been using the 6000 a lot lately because it's just so nice and light to swing. I can swing it all day. But it is very sensitive towards the hot ground and the saturated ground in particular. After the rain it gets even worse. So today I'm just going to try the 7000. I know it is a little bit quieter but also a bit heavier. I don't exactly make things easy for myself because I forgot my hip stick. Now I gotta carry the full weight of the detector instead of releasing some of the weight onto my hip stick, which is connected to my belt and backpack. Unfortunately, looks like I've got to toughen up today. It just started raining once again. It was only a drizzle earlier and now it's proper rain. I'm just quickly going to dig this target before I head off. Just another hole for noisy ground. And speaking about noisy, the thunder is getting louder and louder and I can't see the range in the background anymore. I'm going. Yeah, that came in quicker than I thought. Everything's wet, but at least it's warm. Well, 
I'm glad I had the chance to go out for a few hours this morning because I don't think this is going to change anytime soon. It's going to be like this for a few days, I think. So I won't be able to head into town for another week at least, I'm assuming. And by the way, I'm going to keep my boots and gaiters on for a little while because I did have a visitor, a slithering one here in the camp last night. I looked at it for a second longer than what I'd usually look at because it was moving sideways and that's something you don't see very often in snakes. After I googled it, I didn't like the result, so I'm gonna keep the gators on. There are reports of sideways moving desert death adders in the Pilbara region, so this is exactly where I am. I saw a baby one in the camp last night and usually they reproduce with over 30 babies per hatch. Or is it a clutch? I'm just gonna be precautious and mm -hmm. keep my bush hiking gear on here for a while. I'm really starting to get a little bit impatient here without uh, finding any gold. I'm gonna give it another try today and I promise you next time you're gonna see me it'll be with a piece of gold. there was a breeze in here. Please let it be gold. Where is it? Oh, down in here. We got it out. Oh yes, it's a nugget. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> It's actually gold. Oh, over a gram. Well, that goes to show you it's not all that easy to find gold. I've been looking long and hard for this. And what do you think why I'm the only person out here? It's not all that easy. I might make it look easy sometimes, but it definitely is not easy. Ooh, nice chunk. It's not very pretty because it's covered in ironstone, but definitely gold. Oh, I'm so relieved. I decided to cut over the ranges here and drop in. Yes, it carries gold. First one in quite a few days. Ooh, I'm gonna have a quick rest in the shade, get myself sorted again, have a drink, and then I'll continue upstream. Awesome! Broke the spell! I must have felt that I find gold today. Why well, I brought the mackerel. Of course it would be nice on a slice of bread, but at the moment that's a luxury item. I've been following this creek up for quite a while. It just takes me a long time to detect short distances. Now that I know this one carries gold, I'm even going on the outside bends. I'm going up on the slopes. Oh, it's not a hot rock, but it's an anthill. Got those little holes in there. It's got little holes in there. It's black here, it's red all over. So that's an old burnt out anthill, I'd say. And yes, they do go off on the detector. There must be some sort of a mineralization in here or yeah, it makes a noise on the detector anyway. By the way, I can definitely feel the weight difference from the 7,000 here to the 6,000. It's definitely heavier, but this hip stick here makes it so much easier because it just diverts the weight onto my belt, basically, because that's where it's attached. So I could pretty much have it swinging almost freely. So my arm just guides it 
and swings it around so yeah it is a bit heavier to get it up on the sides as well but it being heavy has also got an advantage pushing through the bushes pushing through the bushes with the coil is just so much easier when the hole detector is a bit heavier you plow a bit through the scrub here which makes it good to get to those targets and another thing i notice how my cord does not get wrapped around bushes and make a noise as well because the cord is inside the stem not outside like on the 6000 and it does occasionally get hooked up in a little branch or something and then it does make a noise on the detector so yeah 7000 good to be swinging that machine again bit noisy but I'll give it a dig anyway a few red schisty rocks here Oh, hot rock. Well, it looks like that is noisy bedrock here. Because both pieces go off and that's that red stuff that comes up out of the hole back there. Not what I'm looking for. We're onto another really awesome sounding signal in a very good gold spot. Right on the rock bar here in the corner over there. Wasn't easy to locate. Hands up who thinks it's gold. Oh, lucky there's a puddle just here. Yes. Can you see it? I can't. Oh yes, I can. I got it. Hang on, I'll give it a clean. This water is very hot. Ooh, maybe not as big as the first one, but it's shiny and golden for a change. Beautiful. Maybe 0.8 or 0.9 of a gram, I'd say. Woo, that's another one out of the squeak. And I was starting to lose my hope a bit because I haven't had a target for a really long time and only had a couple of hot rocks and I think one hole I dug for ashes. Finally, gold continues to roll in now. Plenty of rock bars with plenty of gold traps around here, like that one there. All I gotta do is go low and slow and check every single spot. The closer I get to covering everything, the bigger my chances of finding gold. Yeah, the hills up this end are a bit steeper now so what i'm thinking is i should probably work my way back down and then try and cross it back over where it's not as steep i'm slowly running out of energy and it's still a long hike back to where i've got the quad parked and then it's another 10 kilometers back to the camp Oh no, I think I took the wrong ridge. Oh. oh, hang on. That's where I want to go. 
<sighs> I'm gonna go back a bit and up because I can't get back through <laughs> where I came down on back there there's another gully in between I wouldn't walk in here every day is this a bit of a mission but yeah the gully in the bottom there it does carry gold and it's still gonna be worthwhile for me to check this range and even the mouth of the creek can you see the quad down there so down this way up again and then all the way back down After spending so much time out there without finding any gold at all, I'm glad that I managed to turn that page around. It is hard work to actually find the gold and then dig the gold or just walking all day in the humidity is not exactly an easy task, but I enjoy it and I'm glad we got a little bonus in the tin here. I do want to say that gold is always beautiful, but it's not really the case with one of the two pieces here. It's coated in probably ironstone and looks really dark and black and not really as shiny as the other piece that I found further upstream. Both pieces luckily are quite chunky and well let me hear your guesses first. Let me know what do you think these nuggets weigh in total. I'm gonna say one of these is probably just under a gram and the other one probably a gram and a half so my optimistic guess would be 2.2 grams in total. Let's start with the smaller one. See what that weighs. I'm gonna say 0.8 of a gram. Ooh, 0.94. Awesome, I like when they go over. And the other piece, I'm gonna call this one a 1.3 grammer. Oh yes, 1.9. Awesome. Both pieces are chunky and heavier than what I thought. Together they weigh 2.8 grams. Awesome. Definitely a very good location that little creek there. It's just very hard to get to. I'm glad that I'm still able to do these things. It's probably a different story in a few years time but for now I just enjoy to be active and climb those hills. So next time I'm going down to this creek I'm probably gonna look for a different access point. Probably over the ridge again because it's a shortcut. If you want to tag along feel free to subscribe. Give this video a like. Stay safe out there. I'm gonna see you in the next one.